Okay, my name is Dale Brady, and in 1955, May 25th, at 10.30 at night, our little town was hit by the F5 tornado. This is in South Central Kansas. And uh, I woke up in the night, we just a little town, everybody goes to bed early. So I woke up at night, and uh, I hear this roaring. So I, I called down to my dad, and I says, Dad, what's that noise? And so my dad says, I'm not sure, but you guys, you and Dickie get down there as fast as you can. So we jump out of bed, and he, he's 11 years old, and I'm I'm 16. And we run down the stairs, we put our Levi's on, run downstairs, and we're going to the back door to all of us is going to go down underneath the house in a root cellar. But we get to the back door, and the lock on the door breaks from the, the wind. And then so Dad and I, we pushed the door shut, and my mom and two sisters were standing right beside it, right behind us. And then the, the door splits right down the middle, and then that's when the tornado hit us. And then the, the house started sliding, and then uh, that's all I remember. It just broke up. And then when it come to, the house was gone from above us, from around us, and below us. The foundation, it's, a, it's an old Kansas farmhouse, the foundation was made out of stones, and they was all even blown away. Uh, the barn was gone, the chicken house was gone, the outhouse and uh, everything uh, that was there, tractor, and a car. My brothers couldn't even find one piece of the car to uh, collect insurance. And so there was my dad and mom and uh, my little brother, he was killed. And my two sisters was there laying on the ground. They, we, they never found my little brother for, oh, maybe a couple of weeks. But anyway, <clears throat> here we have a 300, 350 mile an hour wind blow our house away and do all that destruction. Yet, here we lay right at the edge of where the house had been. And with that, how come we didn't get blown away it's only God's, only God can answer that. He did, it wasn't our time to go. And uh, my sister, Karen, she was uh, 12. And I, I, I didn't see her that night, but she told me later that she was, they had pulled a great big elm tree out of the ground, a huge one, probably over close to three foot in diameter. Pulled it out of the ground, and she was down in that hole where the roots had been, and she was pinned down there. And it had rained; it rained a foot that night, and she said she's about to drown before somebody come around and and found us. And uh, and then my little sister, she was about maybe 10, 15 feet from me. She had her, and she leg was so mangled. She was six years old. Her leg, her uh, right leg was so mangled they had to amputate it below the knee. And her left arm below the elbow was, uh, it, it had the two bones in it, well, it tore the small bones, bone clear out of her arm. Mm. And uh, so she, they saved the rest of it. And, uh, but my mother, she wasn't knocked unconscious. And uh, she said that it felt like she went really high in the sky but as this tornado lofted at 55,000 feet. And, of course, it's at night, and there's trees and barns and everything else in that thing, and you can't see. But anyway, she said it just felt like she went really high, and then she'd fall fast and stop, fall fast and stop, and fall fast and stop. And said it set, when she got to the ground, she said it felt like somebody just laid her on the ground, real tender-like. Hmm. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, there were some people finally drove around the town, and... Uh, you couldn't get to through the town to our half place, so somebody went around a, a section and come and found us and uh, and took us to the hospital. And uh, there's no no I've thought about this for 50 years. There is no way to explain that except God God's hand was protecting us. Amen. Psalm 91. Read that. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Yeah.